Hello and welcome to Learning Through the Arts, Perspectives in Arts Education. I'm June Bianchi, Senior Lecturer in Arts Education and Artist. My background as an artist is primarily in visual art, although I am passionate about all of the arts and participate in performance, both singing, dancing and acting. So I have a real passion for sharing experience of the arts with you and um, what I would like to do is first of all just outline to you what we will be exploring. We'll be looking at the arts in education, art, drama, music and dance. Dance sometimes comes as part of PE. There is of course also uh, creative writing, but that is included within the English curriculum. We'll be thinking about how significant the arts are in education, both as individuals and the impact that the arts can have on individuals, and also within society, how significant the arts are within society. What I'd like you to do is have available the resource uh, document which gives you a selection of YouTube videos, which I will be including within this presentation, and also some readings. What I won't be doing is streaming all the videos within this webinar, um, as that makes for uh, quite a large file, but I'll be directing you to pause this YouTube video and then move on to watch some of the others that are linked in that resource document. So please have that document ready as we start the session. So first of all, we're looking at some uh, of the background literature. And this, these are some texts that I would recommend you to dip into to get a wider understanding of the arts. So first off, um, the cross-curricular teaching and learning in the secondary school uh, by Fortley and Savage. And um, this document looks at how the arts contribute to education. And a number of ideas are outlined. First of all, that the arts extend human knowledge, aesthetic, historical, and practical knowledge. That they develop spiritual, moral, social, and cultural awareness, or what is known within education as SMSC that the arts can promote traditional cultures in visual, musical, dance, theatre and aesthetics, as well as promoting emerging genres, contemporary genres, e.g. in new media and technologies. And finally, that the arts support expressive interpretation and performance. So within that, the arts are contributing a wider knowledge of our existence as human beings, both historical um, and practical, as well as some of the skills that we have, our values as cultures and looking to the future. And then Fleming, the arts in education, says that the arts have a strong claim to be part of education. They enrich our understanding of the world, challenge prevailing ideologies, widen our perspectives, engage and delight us and celebrate our humanity. And this is a short uh, document that I'd really strongly recommend you to read. Um, the Virtuous Circle, Why Creativity and Cultural Education Count, Sorrow Robertson Henley. And in this, they state that we need pathways for creative and cultural education, whether your destination is to be a practitioner in the creative industries or to embrace creativity and culture as part of your life, you need a journey to be fully connected. And I think that's important because sometimes people um, dismiss the arts and say, well, you know, how many people are going to be artists? However, we are all participants and we are all audiences for the arts. Uh, there's no one who doesn't go out and select clothing, um, objects for their home, um, who tunes into cinema, TV, music, uh, images online, video, etc. These are all products of the arts. And so we are all uh, part of the arts experience, whether uh, in a professional or within a um, 
and at leisure and pleasure capacity. So here from an evidence review by the Arts Council, and I'd recommend the Arts Council website if you want more information about the arts. And this was entitled The Value of Arts and Culture to People and Societies. And here's a couple of short quotes from this. When we talk about the value of arts and culture to society, we always start with its intrinsic value, how arts and culture can illuminate our inner lives and enrich our emotional world. It's important we also think of our arts and culture for what they are, a strategic national resource. The value of arts and culture to people and society outlines the existing evidence on the impact of arts and culture on our economy, health and well-being society and education. So in this, the Arts Council are building on the previous comments about the value, the intrinsic value, the, the cultural value, um, how the arts explore our inner being, and bringing in another dimension, that of economics, that of, of jobs, um, of a resource that we should value uh, because it is hugely significant with our, within our economy and our well-being as a society. So let's turn to the curriculum. How does the national curriculum respond to these uh, research uh, pieces of evidence? So within 2014, the national curriculum was set out and that has been variously updated, but the basic format remains that the arts provide balance and expressive stimulation and that standards would be made public for each subject. And I recommend that you look into that. That document is available in your, uh, your resource link um, that you can actually access. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is just pause this video and click on the resource link for the arts and cultural education um, video. And this will give you a, an overview of how important the arts and culture are within the curriculum and in terms of developing and extending um, the school. So pause and then come back. So having now looked at the video, and if you have a chance to discuss between yourselves, uh, perhaps you can do that. If you're watching this online, you could form online groups um, with some friends within the module, or you may be watching this um, as a whole group within the session. What I'd like you to think about is a recent experience of the arts, and that can be really broad. As I said, it doesn't have to necessarily include um, being a practitioner or even going to a formal place where the arts are found, such as a gallery or theatre, but it can include um, cinema, it can include something that you've watched online, um, it can include an experience of the arts you had walking down the street, for example, um, seeing something happening that gripped your imagination, made you stop and watch. Um, how that made you feel and then an arts experience from your childhood with your family what was your family like was it an artsy family were you taken uh, to different places to experience the arts um, did you go to the theatre most people would go for the pantomime um, even if they didn't go any other time of year what was that like um, did you ever see visual art in your family was it something that uh, you had on the walls at home, what you talked about, was music shared and enjoyed within your family. And then thinking about your education, what kind of arts experiences did you have at different stages of your education? Uh, how strong was it in your school experience? Did you get taken to uh, arts experiences, the theatre, museums, galleries? Um, were you involved in as a practitioner, a participant in arts experiences within your school? And what kind of impact did you feel that these experiences 
had on your own personal and social development, uh, both your family and cultural experience at home and that of in, within the education setting? Did it enhance your ability to work with others? Did it give you something that you felt you could do for yourself uh, that gave you personal satisfaction? How did it uh, how did it work for you and what impact did it have upon you? So one of the things that I like to do uh, with uh, groups that I teach is share some of my artwork and also my writing. And here is a chapter that I wrote in 2020, Creative Pedagogy for Empowerment, Holistic Learning Through Expressive Arts. And that was uh, in a student's guide to education studies. Uh, you might have come across this guide uh, in other modules, or you may well come across it in the future. And here's just a short quote from this. Expressive arts practitioners and theorists passionately believe the arts are transformational tools, engaging learners in creative and cultural activities, facilitating extrinsic and intrinsic benefits to themselves and their communities. Educators need such strategies and opportunities to develop knowledge, skills and expertise to empower children and young people in their care with a creative, holistic capacities to embrace and address future societal change. And the two images that you can see, these are from two projects um, that I was involved with. The top one uh, was within uh, upper um, primary and I was working with a whole school creating sculptures that would be part of an arts day and would be displayed uh, in their school grounds. And um, these were large scale collaborative sculptures that the groups made using withies and tissue paper. And they were really about building their skills, um, building their, their abilities to work together and their enjoyment of the arts. Um, and extending their understanding of, of artists' work because they were also looking at relevant artists' work. And in the, uh, in the picture below, uh, this was from a project, um, uh, Life Stories, and it was looking at different African cultures. Uh, this was a group of uh, West African uh, performers called Iroko, um, we also looked at um, Ethiopia and some of the cultural traditions there. And young people were involved in workshops, performing workshops, dancing, storytelling, um, music making, and also creating art around these themes with, with the aim to extend their understanding and appreciation of cultural diversity and uh, the way that arts express stories from a range of different lives and cultures. So I've got two videos for you here. So you'll be pausing, um, you'll be pausing this uh, webinar and you'll be watching these two videos. And they both look at the value of the arts in the curriculum. And my statement, I'd like you to consider when you're watching them. I've said here, art and culture make life better, help to build diverse communities and improve our quality of life. Art and culture inspire our education system, boost our economy and give our nation international standing. So that's a, a big claim for the role of the arts and how central they are to our lives within society. So I'd like you now to just pause and watch Let's Create Arts Council England Strategy 2020 to 30, and then Artsmark, bringing art and culture into school. And I'd like you then to think about this statement that I've made here. And if you can discuss it, otherwise consider uh, individually and make your own notes. Do you feel that these two videos represent this statement and uh, provide good evidence for um, the comments that have made in this statement. 
So looking at a few more issues now, uh, sustainability, this uh, project was done some years ago, but in fact, the issue of sustainability hasn't gone away. In fact, it's got more and more to the forefront. And um, this was looking at art and the environment and responding to artists and the landscape, looking at a range of different artists' work, um, exploring the way that, that artists have always been inspired by the landscape and have reached out to um, creating and representing the landscape in a variety of ways. And then in, in, in later years, in more recent years, have actually created art as part of the landscape. And these pieces of art, um, the, the one on the left, and there's a detail above, um, is entitled um, Walk a Mile. And it's about the idea that you can only understand the world when you walk a mile in someone else's shoes, moccasins, sandals, whatever they wear. Those things that you slip on and see the world through their eyes. And um, the idea of this piece of, of art, which was created by some PGC art and design students working with young people uh, around the, the woods in Newton Park, um, was to have somewhere that you came upon that surprised you in the woods and you then looked into it to see who lives there is it someone's home is it is it a special place a magical place and uh, what experiences are to be had there and um on the right this is really inspired by the green man the green person who occurs very early in um, history, you can see in medieval churches and even early representations uh, within cultures, the idea of humans as being part of nature and part of the landscape. Primary pupils here have responded to the work of artists such as Andy Goldsworthy. And you can see their remarkable sculptures that they have created just using natural organic materials and um, leaves, twigs, um, to create these really superb pieces of art. And they have been very much inspired by looking at the way that um, Goldsworthy has really sort of used the landscape um, as a focus for his art and heightened the experience of the landscape brought aspects of it to our attention um, and celebrated nature. And it, this, this would be a good way to link up with other subjects too, with science, uh, to look at the environmental uh, issues which are of concern to us. Climate change is a, a massive issue uh, that is being engaged with and dealt with at all levels. Uh, from uh, lower primary onwards. So th this, this area is one that can lend itself very much to the arts. And here are some uh, post-16 sculptures uh, exploring the environment and human relations. The top one was, uh, they, these were actually created at the millennium. So that was quite some time ago. They were millennium figures and the idea was that they were they were rising up through to greet the new millennium um, and to respond to it and then um, below and on the right was a series of environmental sculptural pieces which could be arranged to create different images have different meanings and um, they are basically rock forms that are covered with a selection of both um, organic and inorganic materials to heighten the way that we interact with the environment. Do we, in, do we interact with the environment in a sensitive and aware way that doesn't leave um, waste behind us, doesn't leave a trace behind us, or do we pollute the environment? These were the kind of questions that were raised in this um, sculptural piece. And then looking at uh, the way, again, that we can link with other areas and other art forms. Uh, these were paintings inspired by abstract artists, Sonia Lorne, Malevich, Kandinsky and Matisse. 
And um, certainly some of those artists, particularly Kandinsky, was very much influenced by musical form. Um, and his work was linked closely with music. And you can imagine how um, a, a, a close uh, uh, collaboration between music and art, and I can also see it extending into dance forms. Um, so uh, the arts can very much work together, particularly within the primary sector, uh, where it's it's very much possible to integrate across subjects, but also at secondary level too. You can see this uh, this linking with historical studies uh, within this silk painting project, and these were uh, on the left. You've got uh, paste resist silk painting that's inspired by Tudor uh, images and uh, studies of Tudor painting and Tudor architecture, um, students could be taken to visits to uh, Tudor buildings. Um, and if that's not available, there is masses of uh, online guides on the internet where you can have a virtual experience. And then on the right, um, silk painting inspired by Victorian artist Marion North, which is also very much linked with um, the environment and nature. And then linking up the art and performance, and um, this can be done very well through mask making, puppetry, and you can see that uh, within this um, this image that shows the progression through from primary to secondary, and also the opportunities that art work in this way gives to uh, students to build their collaborative skills. Um, build their ability to um, engage with each other in a creative um, and effective manner, building social skills, um, helping them to develop capacity to work together, to take on roles and responsibilities within the group and create something exciting together, which can then be enjoyed by the rest of the school, by their, their, their classmates and by um, their, their families. And taking it up again, up to key stage three, uh, this was, uh, the, the, all of these images are images from my, my own work with, with students. And this was an ongoing project that I had for a number of years where um, PGCE students uh, developed uh, short plays and performances around some key texts that would be studied in school. This was Macbeth and created these masked and puppetry performances, took them into schools, performed and then ran workshops, text and image workshops, uh, developing student skills in both the literature aspects and the creative aspects of the project. So participating in a mass performance of Macbeth develops literacy and inspires Key Stage 3 pupils to experiment with drama, improvisation and mask making. Here's the students developing their own masks and body puppets and uh, working towards creating their own Macbeth performance um, and also working with the Tempest. So you can see that um, within, within any text, uh, we, we did a Shakespeare text, such as, as I say, Macbeth and the Tempest. Um, we also took a range of other texts. We took a poem, The Ancient Mariner, um, and developed that. Um, we took Aesop's fables and developed that into um, narratives uh, and many other um, texts that were used within the secondary curriculum. So the links with humanities, and as I said earlier, um, the environment is, is a focus. And there are also other areas that are very much current and very much of concern within our society. Uh, this particular project, Arts and Humanities Link, was uh, 
made exploring Bristol's nautical and trading history, and that related to both historical slave trade and modern slavery. So um, Key Stage 3 and 4 students were engaging with these very cutting edge issues, controversial issues, uh, both within our own society and in previous societies, and creating an artistic response, a creative response um, to their research. So thinking about the, some of those projects that I've shared with you and considering what and your own experiences um, within your family and within the curriculum, what do you think the impact of the arts in education can be? Well, key research findings, and this, uh, this piece of international research by uh, the Case for Cultural Learning, uh, by the Cultural Learning Alliance, which was first conducted in 2011 and then updated in 2017, had some quite surprising results. So learning through arts and culture improves attainment in all subjects. This is um, evidence developed from international findings. It increases cognitive abilities. And it starts to get a little bit more um, surprising. Art students from low income families are three times more likely to get a degree. It improves employability and it improves volunteering 100% and voting 20%. So if you engage with the arts, you're more likely to um, really commit yourself to society as a, a participa participating citizen in a variety of ways. And uh, the other factor was health and well-being would be improved. So what I'd like you to do um, now, if you've got the time, of course, please feel free to watch all of these. There are um, uh, examples of some great arts videos for uh, all of the arts areas. So we've got the art, craft and design in the national curriculum. We've got dance partnerships to unlock the primary curriculum, drama and storytelling activities, drama partnerships to increase attainment in reading, and music education hubs to inspire young people across England. Now, these are all fairly recent and uh, I can recommend all of them. However, if you haven't got time to watch them all, then I suggest you watch at least two because then you can compare across two different subject areas in the curriculum. And what I'd like you to do, either in group discussion or individually, make notes and uh, prepare to discuss when you meet again as a class, what distinctive curriculum learning experiences does each art subject provide? And how do the arts enhance the wider curriculum? So these are two, two questions that I'd like you to consider. What, what is distinctive about the curriculum learning experience of the art subject and what is their contribution to the wider curriculum as you watch these uh, very inspiring and engaging videos? And then finally, there are a selection of further web links. These are all available to you. Uh, in the document um, that I have uh, prepared for you. So there is much more for you to dip into. I hope you've enjoyed this snapshot of the arts in education and the videos that I've um, directed you to. And I hope that you are able to carry on and engage with the arts in education in your ongoing professional life. Goodbye.